So there's a sense in which every object in the universe has a history. Yeah. And that is part of the thing that is used to describe its complexity, how yeah. complicated it is. Okay. What is an assembly index? So the assembly index, if you're to take the object apart and be super lazy about it or minimal, say, well, because my, you know, it's like you've got a really short term memory. So what you do is you lay all the parts on the path and you find the minimum um, number of steps you take on the path to add the parts together to, yeah. re to, to reproduce the object. And that minimum number is the assembly index, is a minimum bound. And it was always my intuition, the minimum bound in assembly theory was really important. And I only worked out why a few weeks ago, which is kind of funny, because mm -hmm. I was just like, no, this is sacrosanct. I don't know why. It will come to me one day. And then when I was pushed by a bunch of mathematicians, um, we, we, we came up with the, the co correct physical explanation, which I can get to. But it's the minimum. And it's really important. It's the minimum. And the reason I knew the minimum was right is because we could measure it. So almost before this paper came out, we've we'd published papers explain how you can measure the assembly index of molecules. Okay, so that's not so trivial to figure out. So when you look at an object, we can say a molecule, we can say object more generally, mm -hmm. to figure out the minimum number of steps it takes to create that object, that doesn't seem like a trivial thing to do. So with molecules, it is, it's not trivial, but it is possible because what you can do and because I'm I'm a chemist, so I'm kind of like I see the lens of the world through just chemistry. Yeah. Um, um, I break the molecule apart and break bonds. And if you break up, if you take a molecule and you break it all apart, you have a bunch of atoms. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to then form bond, take the atoms and form bonds and go up the, the chain of events to make the molecule. And that's what made me realize, take a toy example, literally a toy example, take a Lego object, mm -hmm. which is broken up of Lego blocks. So you could do exactly the same thing. In this case, the Lego blocks are naturally the smallest, they're the atoms in the actual composite Lego architecture. But then if you t maybe take, you know, um, a couple of blocks and put them together in a certain way. Maybe they have a they're offset in some way. That offset is in, on the memory. You can use that offset again with only a penalty of one, and you can then make a square, triangle, and keep going. And you remember those motifs on the chain, so you can then leap from the the start with all the Lego blocks or atoms just laid out in front of you, and say, right, I'll take you, 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 connect, and do the least amount of work. So it's really like uh, the the smallest. Um, um, steps you can take on the graph to make the object. And so for molecules, it came relatively intuitively. And then we started to apply it to language. We've even started to apply it to mathematical theorems, but I'm so well out of my depth. But it looks like you can take minimum set of axioms and then start to build up kind of uh, mathematical architectures in the same way. And then the shortest path to get there is something interesting that I don't yet understand. So wh what's the computational complexity of figuring out the shortest path in um, with molecules, with language, with mathematical theorems, it seems like once you have the fully constructed Lego castle or whatever your favorite Lego world is, figuring out how to get there from the building basic building blocks isn't like a is that an empty hard problem? It's a hard problem. It's a hard problem, but actually, if you look at it, so the best way to look at it, for, let's take a molecule. So if the molecule has um, 13 bonds. First of all, take 13 copies of the molecule and just cut all the bonds. So take cut 12 bonds. And then you just put them in order. Yeah. And then that's how it works. So and you keep looking for symmetry and or, or copies. So you can then shorten it as you go down. And that becomes combinatorially quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, for some natural product molecules, um, it's, it becomes very hard. It's not impossible, but we're looking at the bounds on that at the moment. But as the object gets bigger, mm -hmm. it becomes really hard. And But there, that's the bad news. But the good news is there are shortcuts. And we might even be able to physically measure the complexity without computationally calculating it, which is kind of insane. Wait, wait how would you do that? Well, in the case of molecule, um, let's, let's, so if you shine light on a molecule, let's take it infrared, the, the molecule has each of the bonds absorbs the infrared differently in the, mm -hmm. what we call the fingerprint region. And so it's a bit like, uh, um, and because it's quantized as well, you have all these discrete kind of absorbances. 
And my intuition after we realized we could cut molecules up in mass spec, that was the first go at this. Mm -hmm. We did it with using infrared and the infrared gave us an even better correlation assembly index. And we used another technique as well, in addition to infrared called NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, which tells you about the number of different magnetic environments in a molecule. And that also worked out. So we have three techniques, which each of them independently gives us the same or tending towards the same assembly index for a molecule that we can calculate mathematically. Okay, so these are all methods of mass spectrometry, mass spec. You scan a molecule, it gives you data in the form of a mass spectrum, and you're saying that uh, the data correlates to the assembly index. Yeah. So how generalizable is that shortcut? First of all, to chemistry, and second of all, beyond that. Because that seems like a nice hack, and you're extremely knowledgeable about various aspects of chemistry, so you can say, okay, it kind of correlates. But, you know, the whole idea behind assembly theory paper, and perhaps why it's so controversial, is that it reaches bigger. It reaches for the bigger general theory of objects in the universe. Yeah, I'd say so, I'd agree. So I've started assembly theory of emoticons with my lab, believe it or not. So we take emojis, yeah, pixelate them, yep. and work out the assembly index for the emoji, yeah, and then work out how many emojis you can make on the path of emoji. So there's the Uber emoji from which all other emoji, emo, emojis emerge, yeah, and then you can so you can then take a photograph and by looking at the shortest path on or by reproducing the pixels to make the image you want, you can measure that. So then you start to be able to take um, spatial data. Now there's some problems there. What is then the definition of the object? How many pixels? Um, how do you break it down? And so we're just learning all this right now. So how do you compute the, how would you begin to compute the assembly index of a graphical like a set of pixels on a 2D plane that form a thing. So well, you would, first of all, determine the resolution. So then wh sure. how, how many, what is your X, Y, and what the number on the X yep. and Y plane? And then look at the surface area. And then you take all your emojis and make sure they're all looked at the same resolution. Yes. And then we were basically then um, do the exactly the same thing we would do for cutting the bonds. You'd cut bits out of the emoji on the, and look at the, the, you'd have a bag of pixels, so, um, and you would then add those pixels together to make the overall emoji. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, but like, first of all, not every pixels, I mean, this is at, at the core sort of machine learning and computer vision. Not every pixel is that important, and th there's like macro features, there's micro features yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Like, what, like uh, you know, the eyes appear in a lot of them, the smile appears in a lot of them, so in the same way in chemistry, we assume the bond is fundamental. What we do in there here is we assume the resolution at the scale at which we do it is fundamental. And we're just working that out. And that you're right, that will change, sure. right? Because as you take your lens out a bit, you it will change dramatically. Yeah. But it but it's just a new way of looking at not just compression, what we do right now in computer yeah. science and data. One big kind of... Um, uh, um, kind of misunderstanding is assembly theory is telling you about how compressed the object is. That's not right. It's a how much information is required on a chain of events 